Welcome to BiblioCreep Books and Journaling. Today we'll be doing a mushroom themed setup in my reading journal. So let's get started. Hello creepy friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be making some illustrations of one of my favorite things that can be found in nature, mushrooms. As I usually do with any nature-based themes, I will be drawing actual real-life species of mushrooms, and if I'm able to find copyright-free versions of reference photos for this, these specific species, I will pop them up on the screen for you so you can see what they look like. And the links to any materials that I'm using will be in the description box. So you can see that I did all my pencil sketching ahead of time just to give myself a basic idea of where I wanted everything to go. And so the first step that I'm doing here is outlining everything with a thicker pen to give the outline some definition. And I'm using Sakura Pigma Micron pens to do this. And you will be seeing on several of the pages in these spreads that I already have some brown craft paper frames put in. And I did that off camera just so that we could save some time. And after I get all the basic outlines done, I'm going to then color them in first and then do all of my pen inking shading after I've got the color in. And I will be coloring everything in using zebra mild liners. I've tried to stay pretty true to life with the colors on this one, and luckily with all of the zebra mild liners that I have, I pretty much had all the colors already that I needed to do it. And you can kind of see around in the margins, I've made some little notes to myself about what color or what species these mushrooms are supposed to be, so that when I color them in, I can remember what they're supposed to look like, since there's so many different ones here. And I thought for the cover page that it would look really interesting to have sort of a mushroom wreath going around in a circle with all kinds of different mushrooms and then the title in the middle. Here I'm erasing all my pencil marks because the zebra mild liners are transparent and so if I don't erase them now and I color over them I won't be able to erase it and you'll still be able to see it later. I'm starting out by coloring in these little guys at the bottom and they're kind of like enoki mushrooms which are an edible mushroom that's common in Japanese, Chinese, and Korean cuisines. I'm using a light cream color here, but in reality they are pretty bright white with just a tiny touch of cream in them. Next, these are morels, which are another edible type of mushroom. This is a very widespread mushroom in the United States. It can be found almost in every state. I've never had them, but they are said to have an earthy, nutty, and woody flavor. Here I'm just adding a darker brown in for all the wrinkly bits of the morel, and then they'll get more definition a little bit later when I do all the inking. Next we have the shaggy ink cap. And this is commonly found in Europe and North America. And it's a grayish and white colored mushroom that has kind of a lacy look to it. So a little bit later, I'll be using a white gel pen over top of that. And here we have some bright yellow colored mushrooms. And there are several mushrooms that can be this color. So this one's a little bit generic, I guess. Next, I'm coloring in some of the mushrooms that you find on trees. 
Originally, I was meaning for these to be chicken of the woods, which is, again, a common edible mushroom. However, after I started drawing it, I realized that I made them too tall. Like, they're, the caps of the mushrooms aren't close enough together. So this one's not very accurate, but I like how they look. Now we're moving on to some wine cap mushrooms. So I have three on the left side and then one here on the right side that's a little further along in development. These can grow to be very large, up to 12 inches in diameter. Here I have some purple mushrooms that I'll also continue using on the following spreads after this. And there are many different kinds of purple mushrooms. Um, but this one is sort of modeled after the viscid violet corp. Now I'm moving on to do all the shading and the details over top of the color. And as I always do, I'm using kind of a lines and cross hatching kind of shading method. And I'm using my Sakura Pigma Micron pens in a couple different sizes in order to do this. Here's the fine tipped white gel pen. These are Jelly Roll, they're new, and they are not working as well as I would like them to work either. So if anybody knows a good brand of gel pen, please let me know because so far I'm striking out. Anyway, I was using that to give the lacy appearance to the shaggy ink caps. You'll see that I'm just doing a couple little lines underneath the caps of the mushrooms and also where they overlap each other, just to give a sense of where the shadows would be. And here I'm also using some lines to give a little bit of shape to the caps and give them a little bit more of a three-dimensional or rounded effect. And these guys right here are some psilocybe mushrooms. As you may know, there are many types of mushrooms that are used for medicinal purposes throughout history. And the psilocybe mushroom is one that has been made illegal, at least in the United States. However, in recent years, there's been a lot more research going on in the United States and in other countries as well for the psychiatric uses of psilocybin mushrooms, and they're looking into whether it could be a treatment for PTSD, depression, or anxiety. So hopefully in the future, we'll find out more about that. Of course, there are a wide variety of medicinal compounds that can be found in many different kinds of mushrooms. According to UCLA Health, there have been studies showing the medicinal effects of mushrooms in relation to decreasing cancer. The compound ergothionine helps with that. Mushrooms can also lower cholesterol, protect brain health. The polysaccharides in them can stimulate a healthier gut, and they can support a healthy immune system by providing selenium, vitamin D, and vitamin B6. If you have trypophobia, you might not want to watch this part. I'm going to be making the holes on these morel mushrooms, so hopefully that doesn't freak anybody out. But I'm just outlining them with my pen and then I'm shading it in to give the shadows. And these morel mushrooms are really wrinkly looking. They kind of look like when you've been in the water a really long time and your fingers are super wrinkly.
for the title, I'm using a Jelly Roll Gold Gel Pen, and I'm using a similar script font that I used also in August. And again, I'm going to fake that script look by coming in and uh, thickening up the downstrokes a little bit. I'm keeping the boxes in all these spreads very simple since there's so much uh, busyness going on with all the illustrations. But the one thing I did do to decorate them is to draw a little bit of wood grain on this brown craft paper. And I thought that would go well with this fungus theme. And this is something that's pretty easy to do because you don't need to be neat. You can be as messy as you want. So I just put a couple of little oval shapes in for the knots in the wood. And then you just follow along with some lines squiggling around wherever you want to put them. And here's a look at the title page. And now we're going to move on to the left hand side, which is going to be where I will put my book covers. And then the right hand side is the calendar where I will mark in the days that I read each specific book. Again, I'm using a thicker pen to do the outlines of everything and then I'll color things in and then do the shading. I have a couple different species here and some of the same ones as on the front page. And I have more space, so I could definitely make them a little bit bigger on this particular spread. To fill in the space between the bigger ones, I made little groups of some baby beach mushrooms here, which are native to Southeast Asia and they've got a brown cap and a lighter colored uh, stipe or stalk. These trumpet shaped ones are going to be chanterelles, although they are a little bit more uh, ruffly around the top than I've drawn them here. Here are some more of those shaggy ink caps that I did on the first page. And I wanted to do a bigger version of them just because I really enjoy how they look. And there's different kinds of ink cap mushrooms, but they're called that because after you cut them, they start to break down very quickly. And they kind of turn into a oozy black liquid. And so they look inky. And Although they look pretty nasty, uh, the shaggy ink cap is actually an edible mushroom as long as you pick it when it's fairly young and it'll have a nice flavor and it won't be bitter. And I think this is a good point at which to put a disclaimer on this video that I just thought of. And that is, do not pick mushrooms from the wild and eat them unless you are an expert at identification. I'm showing you a lot of little drawings of edible mushrooms, and there are a ton of edible mushrooms. However, there are many poisonous ones that look extremely similar to a lot of the edible ones. So do not forage for mushrooms and eat them unless you are absolutely 100% sure about being able to identify them correctly. Okay, so here we have me making a giant mistake with these chanterelles. I'm just putting so many lines on them and I keep trying to fix it and adding more lines to try to fix it and it's just turning into a giant disaster. So I gave up on it right here but I will come back and fix it later.
So here are the acrylic paint pens coming in to save the day. And I will put one layer of acrylic and then I'll come back after that dries and put another layer on top. And acrylic paint pen can be really good to use to fix your mistakes because it is opaque. So you can cover things up pretty well with it if you use a couple of layers. And these mushrooms here are fly agaric or fly amanita, which are the stereotypical red mushroom with the white spots. Historically, a variant of this one was used as a psychoactive substance in spiritual rituals by the indigenous people of Siberia. However, it is poisonous and dangerous, so don't eat this one. Here I'm doing a second layer with the paint pen and I'm just kind of tapping it to give a little bit more of a three-dimensional look to the spots. And then I'm gonna come back in with my pen and do a little bit of a shadow underneath them as these spots kind of stick out from the cap. And so they have a little bit of three-dimensionality to them. And here's my second attempt at these chanterelles, and it's still not my favorite thing that I've ever drawn, but I think it looks much better than the first attempt. But we all need to be kind to ourselves when we're doing anything creative or anything that we're evaluating ourselves about. And you know, everybody makes mistakes, that's why I like to leave them in for you to see that even people who make YouTube videos about these things make a lot of mistakes too. To do the calendar this month, I decided not to do a box style calendar and to do this list style instead. So I've just listed the day down the side in gold pen and that's it. And then I'll use this to mark which days I read which books. And then once again, I'm going to draw my wood grain pattern onto this brown craft paper frame. And I'll do that on the following pages as well. Now we're moving on to the final spread for this month, which is my book review spread. And as I usually do, there'll be six sections on this spread, so there'll be space for six book reviews. And I decided to do that same tree fungus that I uh, drew on the first spread. And then we'll have the wooden border around both the two pages. While you watch this final illustration, please enjoy some fungi facts from the Missouri Department of Conservation. Mushrooms are neither plants nor animals. They constitute their own kingdom, the fungi. This includes the familiar mushroom forming species, as well as yeasts, molds, smuts, and rusts. Few of us see the entire life cycle of mushrooms, since most of it takes place underground or beneath the bark of dead or living trees. Before developing the mushroom structure, the fungus lives as a mycelium, a mat-like or net-like network of filaments infusing a patch of soil or wood. When conditions are right, the mycelium develops a fruiting structure, a mushroom, which emerges from the ground or the tree. Instead of seeds, mushrooms produce spores, which are almost as fine as smoke. When spores land in a suitable place, they germinate, developing the fine filaments that eventually become a new mycelium. Mushrooms usually don't last very long. Once they've shed their spores, they collapse and deteriorate. Some, such as turkey tails, however, last much longer. 
Some fungi digest nutrients from dead materials such as leaves and fallen trees. A compost heap hosts plenty of these fungi. The members of this group are called saprophytes. Other fungi digest materials from living tissues. These are called parasites. When you see mushrooms growing from a living tree, that tree is undoubtedly being parasitized by a fungus under its bark. The mycorrhizal fungi are a third group. Underground, they form a mutually beneficial relationship with the roots of plants. They help the plants to absorb water and minerals, and the plants provide nutrients for the fungus. Many trees, orchids, and other plants cannot live without these fungal partners. There are about 10,000 kinds of mushrooms in North America, and they have an astonishing array of shapes, sizes, and colors. And that wraps it up. I hope you've enjoyed this video today, and I hope you've learned some interesting information about fungus. A little piece of news, with your support, last month I was able to reach 1,000 subscribers, which is awesome, and that was a big accomplishment for me. So to say thanks to all of you who've been watching and who've subscribed, I will be doing a giveaway in the next month or two. So stay tuned to this channel, and I'll be releasing more information about that in the near future. And please join me next week. I will be doing the September setup for my bullet journal. And I haven't decided on the theme for that one yet, so we'll see what I come up with. If you'd like more book and journaling content from me, check out my website, bibliocreep.com, or join me on social media. My handle is always at biblio underscore creep. As always, I hope you've been kind to yourself and you've been taking care of yourself. Don't forget to drink your water, take some time to do something that you enjoy, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!